In this video, we'll create this interactive Excel dashboard that updates based on your timeline and slicer preferences. And you can download the Excel file in the description. So let's get into it. Suppose we're analysts at Coca-Cola and this is the data set we're working with. Based on this, we want to create a visual dashboard that's going to tell us how the company is currently performing and what are some of the customer trends. So firstly, let's take a look at the data set and we've got the key American Coca-Cola retailers. So we've got that over here alongside some relevant um, figures like the region, the beverage brands so within Coca-Cola, they own Fanta, Sprite, etc. And then we've got the different financials right over here. And to see how long this data set is, go to control, control down arrow. That should get you to the bottom. And you can see here that it's over 3000 rows long. Now to start the analysis, let's convert this into a table. So go to control up arrow all the way to the top here. And we'll select everything by going control shift down and then control shift right. From there, you can go to the insert and table here, or you can press control T. That's a shortcut for that. That's going to get us the range and hit OK. Now we have all of this in table format, which is what we're looking for. Once we have this looking like a table, let's take a look at the dashboard tab, go to control page down, and here's what we currently have. We have the Coca-Cola logo alongside the key American retailers. So up on top over here, it'd be nice to have a few of the summary, the key financial figures essentially. So the total revenue, the quantity sold, etc. So for this, go to control page down under the data. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert a pivot table, click on that, from there hit OK. And so we'll create a new sheet there and we want to get the key financial figures there. So essentially we're going to have the total sales. We'll put that under values. That's going to give us the sum of total sales. So that's the total revenue for us. Similarly, we want to get the unit sold. So how much, how much Coca-Cola or how many bottles did we sell? Then we've got the operating profit. And lastly, we'll get the operating margin. But because this is actually a percentage, the margin, we're going to change that. So go and click on it and then we'll go to value field settings. I will change that to an average, hit OK. And now we've got all of these different financials that we think are going to be quite useful. Now that we've calculated these figures, we can put them in the dashboard by linking them. So go to control page down over here up until you get to the dashboard. And the first thing that we're going to have is the total sales over here. And then we're going to put the total units sold. And let me fast forward all of this so you don't have to watch it. Once we have all of them listed, we're just going to go ahead and link them. So we'll go equals for total sales. It's going to be the sum of total sales over here. And then just next to that for units sold, we're going to go back up. It's going to be this one here. Nice. Now, whenever they open the Excel file, you're going to have all of these summary financials, which are going to be the most important ones. So that's quite handy. Now that we have the relevant financials for the year, it would be nice to see a monthly breakdown. Maybe in the summer months, there is more sales because people are going out more, for instance. For this, we'll create another pivot table. So go ahead and go under the data here and then we'll go insert pivot table. And this time we want to put it in an existing worksheet and that location we want to click over here. It's going to be, let's say we put it just below um, where the current one is and we'll select that there and hit OK. So we said we wanted the dates on one side and for that we can just select the invoice date. So we'll put that under the row and that should give us the months as you can see over here. And then we also want to have the total sales as the values, which is going to be the sum of them that you can see over here. Once we have this information, let's go ahead and reformat it. So select all of it by going to shift up, up arrow and then control one there. And we're going to change this to a currency format. We don't want any decimals, so we'll put zero decimals there and the dollar sign works for us and we'll hit OK. Nice. Now let's insert a pivot chart as we have both the months and the relevant uh, financials that we need. So we'll go under pivot table analyze and select pivot chart, hit OK. And that's the pivot chart that we want. From there, we'll copy it to the dashboard tab. So control C, control page down arrow, control page down arrow, and go over here. And this is the one that we want to um, do. Now let's reformat this one. So firstly, we'll remove these um, different labels that we've got. For this, we'll go under the pivot, pivot chart analyze. Under field buttons, we want to go to hide all. That should hide it for us. That's the first step. Then for the legend, we can delete that. So just press the delete key. Also, we don't really need these, these lines here. So we'll delete them as well. And we want to change this name to something like monthly sales. From there, we also want to make this a bit thicker so it looks a bit nicer than what it's currently looking like. For this, we'll right click on it, go to format data series. And let's change this gap width to something like um, 40 here. Hit enter. Now that's looking slightly more like it. Let's open this up a bit. And let's also remove these borders. So for this, just select it, go under border and we're going to go no line. Nice, that's looking a bit more like it. Let's bolden this. And for the fill color here, we also want to change that. So go under home and we can go ahead and select it from here. Let's say we go for a light blue like that. Nice, now we can see the monthly breakdown. 
One thing that would be nice though is to make it dynamic. So maybe you only want to see the first half of the year and so you want to be able to change that graph dynamically. For this, firstly, let's click on it, go under pivot chart analyze and we'll go insert timeline for the invoice date and hit OK. Now we have this thing over here. Let's go ahead and drag that out. So we'll drag it all the way, all the way to the end here. And so now if we start to look at it, you can see that we've got all of the periods here. And if we drag them, suppose I go only to October, you can see that the chart updates dynamically with it as well. And there you go even further and so on. So that's basically the idea with this type of chart. Let's go ahead and reformat it to make it look like everything else. Firstly, we'll change the invoice date title here, which you can do up over here. And we can put something like sales period, hit enter there. And then we're going to change the coloring here for this, go under this drop down, and we'll go new timeline style. And we want to change the color of the selected time block, which is this light blue area. We'll go under format there. And for the fill, we want to change the fill color, go to more colors so we can customize it to the same color as up here. And that's going to be the 2A3E68, hit, hit OK there, and then hit OK again, and hit OK, and that should do it for us. Then we want to change that to that one, so we'll go ahead and click on it here under the customized options that we've got. And now that's looking a bit more like it. We also want to get rid of that border, so we'll go ahead and click on it, right click, go to modify, and from there go to the whole timeline, go under format, go under uh, border here, and we'll change that to none, hit OK, and then hit OK again. If we extend this back out to the whole year, so just go ahead and drag that across the whole year, you can see that there's a bit of a trend where in the month of the summer period, it seems like sales pick up there. And then again, towards the end of the year, they do as well. So there's some sort of season seasonality going on there. And if you like what you're seeing, we do have an Excel for business and finance course where we teach everything we know about Excel specifically for people either looking to break into a business or a finance role or those in it trying to level up their Excel game. Unlike most theoretical courses, we tried to make this one as practical as possible based on our real experiences working at companies like Tesla or Amazon. So aside from the typical lessons on formatting, formulas and charts, we also have case studies that replicate the type of work you might be assigned in your day to day, ranging from financial modeling to cleaning a data set and presenting some visual insights. So if you're interested in checking it out, go to the link in the description below. One thing that the visuals we've made so far don't consider are the regions. So how well do we sell in California? What about in New York? All of that stuff we don't really know right now. So let's create a visual for that. To showcase this, we can insert a dynamic map of the US that's gonna tell us which region is doing best, kind of like a heat map. For this, we'll go back to the data tab. So control page down here. And what we wanna do is create another pivot table. So we'll go to insert pivot table. And we want to put this in an existing sheet. Let's say we go back to that sheet two that we've got here and we'll put it down over here. Hit there and then hit OK. Nice. And here what we want to do is on the row side, we want to have the state. And then on the values, instead of having the total revenue, let's go by the unit sold. So the quantity, we'll go ahead and put that and it should be the sum of units sold. Now, if you scroll down over here, you can see that we've got the breakdown for all the states. Now to create a map chart, we're actually gonna have to um, not do it on a pivot table as that doesn't work. So we'll go ahead and link them here, equals Alabama, and then we can just drag them, drag that down and across all the way till we get to the bottom, which is over here. And there we go. Once we have this, we can select it. So control, control shift down arrow, control shift right. And from there, we're gonna go to insert. And what we wanna insert is a map, so you can see there, and we're gonna go on that one, click on it. Now you can see that we've got a map of the US, which is somewhat like a heat map where depending on if it's selling more, it's gonna be um, a bit of a denser color. We'll go ahead and copy that map, so Control C, and we'll edit it on the dashboard tab that we got over here, and then just paste it, so Control V. And let's say we put it over here to the side. Let me just scroll over there so we can see it a bit better. For a chart title, we're gonna change this to something like uh, map of units sold. And over here under series one, we also want to change this. So we'll go right click on it and we'll go to select data. And I'm going to change that. So we'll go to edit there and we'll put units sold and hit OK. Hit OK again. And now we have that looking good. Let's go ahead and make this slightly bigger there. And now let me change the color of these titles, make them bold as well and put them to a blue color. For this, I'm just going to fast forward it as it's quite easy. I also want to add some commas here to the unit so it's easier to tell. So we'll go under the data tab. Sorry, go to the sheet two here 
and instead we're gonna go control control up here then control shift down arrow so we select all of them press control one and we're gonna go under number we want to use the separator and we don't want decimals so we'll put those at zero and hit ok then go to dashboard and that should be updated for us as you can see over here Taking a closer look at this map, we can really start to see that California over here, Texas and some other states are really the main drivers of the quantity sold here. Uh, and that makes sense after all, that's probably where the biggest populations are within the US. One thing you might have noticed is that we don't really have much information on specific retailers or specific brands. So for example, how, how much in revenue has Fanta made? How about Sprite, etc. So let's go ahead and work on that. For this, we'll need to make a few slicers. So firstly, go ahead and click on that chart then we'll go under pivot chart analyze and we'll go to insert slicer. From here, we want to do one for the retailer, say, then let's also do another one for the region. Why not? And lastly, let's do one by beverage brand and hit OK there. Now you can see that we've got these three different slicers. Let me fast forward me uh, reformatting them. To show you what these slicers do, so if you go ahead and click on any of these, say Dreamco, you'll notice that the monthly sales start to change, same thing if you go to Coca-Cola, but everything else isn't changing, so the total sales or the map, the heat map right here is not going to change, that's because it's currently not linked. So let's go ahead and link it as well. We'll go under sheet 2 over here, and under the total sums that we've got, so that's the very top part of the dashboard, we'll go under pivot table analyze, and we'll go to filter connections. Here we want to tick on all of these. For this one, it's already gonna be linked because that's the first one we link to. And then down over here, we wanna actually put the state name. So we're just gonna put state up on top. And over here, we're gonna put unit sold. And uh, we wanna link this over here, which is the actual pivot table, as this is just being linked. Go to pivot table analyze. Again, go to filter connections, and we're gonna tick on all of them. And now if we go back to the dashboard, um, let's say we change the Coca -Co from Coca-Cola to the Sunny Water and we put this first retailer. You'll notice that everything starts to change dynamically. So the totals over here as well as the map as you can see down below. You'll notice that there's this sign over here under the map, which if you click inside it, it's just going to say something like, hey, um, this is high confidence or not. So don't really um, worry too much about that. One final thing we could do here with the slicers is reformat them to look like everything else. So in this dark blue color. So let's go ahead and select all, on the, all of them. So go to control and then click on them. So keep holding the control key. From there, we'll go to slicer and we want to go on the drop down and go to new slicer style. For the whole slicer, what we want to do here, firstly, if we get the selected item with data, we'll go to format there. Then for the fill color, we want to change that color to that dark blue. So that's going to be down over here under the hex value. We'll go to A3E68, hit enter, and then we'll go to OK. From there, we also want to format, go to format again, and this time for the font color. So if it's dark in the background, we need a white color um, for the actual text. So we'll go ahead and click on white, and hit OK, hit OK again. And now we've got this new format that should be this one over here. So you, if you click on it, you can see what it's currently looking like. And so that's looking a lot more clean, I think. Now we have a fully dynamic dashboard. So for example, here, if I'm focused specifically on the south to see how that's performing, you can see that the map will aut automatically update just to the south area. And so will all of the figures for that. Go press the X on the filter there, so it defilters everything. Similarly, if we want to see how Fanta is performing, because maybe we're in charge of that, you can see all of the breakdown for that here as well. And you can even change the timeline over here to say um, up until September, for instance. For more on dynamic dashboards on Excel, check out this link over here. And if you want to learn more about Excel specifically for business and finance, check out this link over here. That's all for this video. Hit that like, hit that subscribe if you liked it, and I'll catch you in the next one.